motivation can be internal or external. Earlier, we were talking about how you can be motivated by your feelings about yourself, about what you want to achieve for your own self-esteem. And that's a powerful driving force in learning. But an equally powerful force is external motivation. Motivation from outside circumstances or needs. In the English market, people enjoy making and selling produce like breads and fruit. This enjoyment is their internal motivation. They like it, so they keep doing it. But we also need money to pay our bills and this need is an external factor. Kevin enjoys his photography and he wants to put on exhibitions to share this with other people. So he has both the internal and the external motivation to improve his reading and writing skills. Kevin's interests and his external motivation are great driving forces for him to continue learning and achieving. Earlier, we saw Stephen making and selling jam in the English market. He's very lucky. He's got internal motivation, he likes making jam, and external motivation, he gets paid for it. Other examples of external motivation are wanting to be able to help your children with their homework, wanting to get in shape for your holidays, or wanting to get promotion in your job. Kevin has found that his reading and writing skills are put to use on a daily basis. However, his return to education has led to achievements that he could never have dreamt of. Well, I, I worked in Bordnemona for 26 years and uh, an uncle of my wife, uh, Tom, died recently and he left us this farm. So from there I, I took over and enjoy every moment of the farming now. It's a great life. Spelling is a very important part in modern day farming. Um, there's always some sort of a form coming through the post. Uh, nearly every day you get some sort of a form and those have to be filled up. <coughs> if I had very good spelling from the beginning, I don't know would it have changed my life. I probably would have went on to be a fitter in Bordnemona. But then I wouldn't be in the position I'm in today, I wouldn't be um, sitting on the NALA executive, I wouldn't be the chairperson of the Tullamore Student Adult uh, Learning Centre. Come on. Come on, lads. I was aware that people used to go back to education, but I thought that those people were people that hadn't been educated in their younger lives. And when I went back, I realised that there were people like myself that had gone through the school system, but just hadn't... Um, mastered some particular subject. When I came back to education here in the centre in Tullamore, I just never visualised myself sitting as a chairperson on any committee really. Good afternoon everybody. We'll get this meeting started I suppose. I never realised that I could have the confidence uh, to sit down and chair a, a meeting. The fact that I came back to the education motivated me to bring myself on to this particular position that I'm in now. Oh, hiya Mary, how are you? Hiya, hiya Paddy, Hello. great to see you again. I'm also involved with the NALA executive. Um, it, it, it was a bit nerve-wracking at the beginning, but there again, it's like everything else. The Adult Learning Centre gave me the confidence to be able to, to do that and sit in that position. And that, that also keeps, keeps the students motivated. Going back to education has broadened my horizons and it made me look at things in a different way. Um, it gives me the opportunity to help other adults that are out there that would have a problem. I can bring their point of view across to the uh, various committees that I've sat on and it gives me a great opportunity to help those people that are in need of uh, literacy skills. And in, uh, on the 25th of October, we have a return visit. Kilkenny uh, students are coming down here, the student committee is coming down here to us. So we, ha we don't have to arrange transport for them, so they'll be, that end of it will be okay. But we'll have to arrange, arrange entertainment and, 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 yeah, and <coughs> facilitate them in that way. Yeah, facilitate for the day. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. We'll, we'll probably just, uh, meet them here. Yeah. It yeah. will be meeting them here or whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We will do as good as they do with us, like we have. Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll do it better than them. We'll do it better. Oh, we'll do it better. Yeah. Whatever they give us, we'll double it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
As we've heard from Kevin's story, getting back into education isn't just about improving your reading and writing skills. It can also help you to build your confidence. And it may lead you into other activities such as joining a committee or a sports group. Because very often the most terrifying and difficult part is making that first step. Picking up the phone or going into a centre for the first time. But if you talk to any of the learners featured in this series, they'll tell you it's the best thing they've ever done. And now to this week's spelling tip which features CH and SH words. Each letter in the alphabet has a sound. However, some letters come together to make a new sound. The most common examples of this are SH and CH. S and H come together to make the new sound SH in words like shop, shine and shampoo. C and H come together to make the new sound CH in words like chip, chat and chair. Remembering these sounds sh for sh and ch for ch will help you spell words where you hear these sounds. It's important to remember that you can hear the sounds of sh and ch at the end of words too. The sound sh appears at the end of words like cash, crash, dash and splash. The sound ch appears at the end of words like rich, catch, and match. Knowing that sh makes the sound sh and ch makes the sound ch at the beginning and end of words will help you with your spelling. Well, these divers are certainly making a big splash and not just in the water. It all looks a bit advanced for me, so I think on this occasion, I'll leave it to the experts. In the meantime, here's Terry with a recap on how to stay motivated. Motivation is what drives you to achieve your goals and it can be internal or external. Have a look at the chart in the workbook and list your goals and then see what motivates you and use that to help your learning. Thanks Terry. We heard about Kevin's difficulties with writing letters and how it would take him hours just to complete one. Can you imagine his frustration? But anyway, he persevered and now it's second nature to him. And you can do the same. Let's have a look back at this week's learning tip, which was on letter writing. There are two types of letters, formal letters and informal letters. A formal letter could be a letter to the bank, letter of application or letter of complaint. Informal letters are usually sent to family and friends. We also had some good advice on how to use paragraphs. Paragraphs are used to break up large chunks of sentences. There are no specific rules about where a paragraph starts and ends, but you'd normally start a new one when there's a change of person, place or time. Remember that NALA helpline, it's 1-800-2020-65. You can call it for advice on how to go back to learning or simply to get a copy of the Read Right Now workbook, which includes all of this week's learning points, including our spelling tips on CH and SH words. Each letter in the alphabet has a sound. When S and H are put together, they make the sound SH, as in splash. When C and H are put together, it sounds like CH, as in chair. Kevin has told us that the last six years since he's been back in education have been the best six years of his life. And if he had any advice... Just take that step and look up your local adult learning centre and make the step that I made. Next week, Ian Robertson will be telling us all about multiple intelligence, how different people are intelligent in different ways. We'll be hearing about a grandmother from Beliver who's gone from not being able to read and write herself to working with children and helping them with their homework. And we'll have all of our usual reading, writing and spelling tips. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm off for a swim. See you next week. For more information on courses and schemes available in your area, just phone or call into your local VEC centre.